Hi, Anna, are you able to hear me? This is Amrit. We hear you. Yes. Oh. Yep, I can hear you. I just want to let you know, I happen to be on call today as well. So in case I get paged or something, I may have to drop off. I'll send you an email if that happens. Okay, understand. Thanks for the heads up. No problem. Hey, Henry and Pete and Paul. <clears throat> Good evening. Hi, Paul. Pete, long time no see. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I missed the last meeting. Me too. I, and I'm also invisible. I'm sorry, I don't have very good lighting in here. It looks like a, a halo over your head. <laughs> it looks quite angelic. Ooh. Oh, now you have the computer glow. There we are. The beautiful computer glow of It's very quiet tonight. Waiting on Casey, Jen, and Jim, who also they could attend. So give them a minute or two here. Just trying to find. <clears throat> There's Casey, there's Matt. So we do have a quorum, Casey. Um, as far as I know, Jen and Jim will be joining us. They might be another minute or two, but we do have enough people here that we could get started. Great, why don't we open the meeting? <clears throat> Uh, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Casey Atkins present. Paul Bohm present. Pete Funkhauser present. Great. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Andy sent out the minutes um, a couple hours ago. I, did everybody have a chance to take a peek at those? Any questions, comments, feedback? Changes. Well, as um, I was not present at the last meeting, I don't have an opinion on them. I don't think you're allowed to. And by the way, my apologies. It was a complete screw up on my part. Forgive me. Oh, that's me. okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Paul, you good with the? I'm good. They look, they look good to me. Yep, I see them. Great. Here's they Jen. look good with me too. Right. Um, so even though I know Pete wasn't at the sorry, Pete wasn't at the last meeting, but um, he can still vote on the meeting or the uh, the minutes, or he can abstain. Correct. He can vote on them. Yeah, based upon the form. Yep. Okay. He doesn't have to have been there. So why don't we? Uh, 
Uh, anyone want to make a motion to vote on the minutes? Excuse me. I, I move to accept the minutes. And a second. I'll second. Motion to approve the minutes. Great. And then um, we need to do a roll call for all votes. So, uh, Paul Bowen. Yes. Uh, Pete Funkhauser. Yes. Jen Lutz. Yes. And Casey Atkins. Yes. Great. <clears throat> okay. You know, do you have any nighttime programs for kids at like 7.30 p.m. or 7 p.m. that they can go into? Someone can brush their teeth, get them in their pajamas, <laughs> the whole, I don't know, Minecraft game out of it. <laughs> it is prime time for uh, elementary school programs. So we'll see what we can do. Um, so thank you all for joining us um, at the meeting tonight. There are a couple additional faces on here um, that will be new for you. And I wanted to introduce some folks. So um, one face that you'll see, Adam LaPointe. He is our new assistant director of recreation. Um, I'm going to share a little bio um, about Adam and then let him introduce himself to you all. Um, and if everybody could just do a quick name and role um, in town, that would be fantastic as well. So um, Adam, like I said, joins us as the new assistant director. He was raised in North Attleboro, currently lives in Uxbridge. He received a bachelor's degree in youth development from Springfield College and recently received his master's in public administration from Framingham State. Adam's work experience varies from public and private recreation, from YMCA's in Boston and Hartford to his recent role as the recreation program coordinator for the town of Westboro. He has a significant amount of experience in positive youth development programming, management of parks and recreation facilities, physical plant management, and budget oversight. He is married to his wife, Maddie, of four years, and they just had their first baby two months ago. Um, so he is freshly off of paternity leave and getting his, uh, as he called it, adult working brain kind of back in order this week. So he's really hit the ground running with us. Uh, we're super excited to have him. His office will be located at the Hunt Recreation Center, um, and I will share an email with you all, including his email address and um, extension, so you could reach him if <clears throat> you need him. So Adam, I'm going to pass it to you. If there's anything that I've missed or anything else you'd like to say to the Rec Commission, please do. Hi, everybody. Um, outside of what was just, uh, Anna just introduced me that Basically, that's kind of my life right now is basically being a dad and, and, and coming back into the workforce, but I'm really excited uh, to be serving the, the community of Concord. Um, I really got into, after working in Westboro, uh, working in town recreation, so it really got me kind of amped, and when this position opened up, I was very excited to explore the opportunity, and obviously it worked out great in my favor, um, but I'm really excited just based on what I've seen so far in the two days I've started, uh, just to see where Concord is and where it can go, just with all the great opportunities out there, so I'm thankful to be on board and thankful to uh, be a part of it so thanks adam and and i should note we had a really large um, candidate pool over two different posting periods um, so adam was the chosen one out of probably 40 applicants that we had so um, he's really the cream of the crop we're lucky to have him lucky that he chose us um, and really look forward to him helping to lead not only these meetings and discussions but uh, the recreation department as a whole so uh, welcome, Adam. If we could quickly just go around, like I said, and everyone introduce themselves to Adam briefly, how long you've been on the commission or why you're on the commission, that would be great. Adam, welcome, and we are delighted to have you. My name is Casey Atkins. I am currently chair, and I have been on the Recreation Commission since, I believe, 2015. Anna, Sounds about right. Okay. Um, so just a little north of five years. And uh, you've got big shoes to fill as assistant rec director, but um, but so excited to have you on board. And I think you've got a great blend of experience and congratulations on your new child. Thank you. Let's say hi, Paul Bohm. I've uh, been living in town 40, 45 plus years. So I have three generations, myself, my kids, and my grandkids have all enjoyed and are enjoying the fruits of Anna's and the department's labors. You're joining a real whirlwind of activity in the department and uh, a great department. Um, I've been on the, how long have I been on the commission? A year plus? About a year, yeah. I'm also the commission's representative to the uh, Community Preservation 
um, committee, which is um, uh, has the pleasure and opportunity funding recreation and open space programs uh, across the across the town. So welcome. Thanks, Paul. Pete, you want to go? Mute. You're on mute, Pete. Thank you, Paul. I muted myself out of modesty. Um, I've been on the Recreation Committee for about a year. Um, I lived in Concord. Actually, I grew up in Concord and graduated from Concord High School. So I've been here a long time. And um, I have a certain connection with the BD Center, which is important to this town. So I'm very interested in, in what the Recreation Commission does. And I'm enthusiastic about it. Can I ask you a question, Adam? Sure, shoot. Since we get, since you're on the, <laughs> on there, and we get to to speak to you, what attracted you to take this job in Concord? Um, so, once I got involved in Westboro's Recreation Department, I really, when I worked at YMCA's, it, there was a different, it was a different type of recreation. Um, and I think for me, when I moved into a town recreation department, I felt that the things like, you know, recreation commission, different commissions, I felt were 10 times more engaged and invested in the department, but also the community. Because, you know, if you go to a YMCA, sometimes the board of directors aren't, don't live in town or don't live in a, you know, neighboring community. So it's, it's challenging for them to have, you know, active buy-in. Um, and I think also just for me developmentally, um, before I had applied, I had, I had looked at what Concord currently offers. Um, and I did kind of miss the hustle and bustle of going to things like the BD Center and having a physical plant space. Uh, Westboro didn't have or doesn't have a rec center. Or we just operate a beach in the summer and we use the schools um, for, for programming. So I was really excited to get back into kind of the bigger picture programming aspect of, of stuff I used to do at the Y. Um, and just from, like I said, from the I took a tour yesterday with some of the staff and just really nice to see the community and, you know, how active and vibrant it is. So. Good. Thank you. Uh, Jen, you want to go next? Hi, I'm Jen. Um, welcome, Adam. Great to have you. Um, I'm the commissioner now for about two and a half years. Um, my husband and I moved to Concord nine years ago now. And I remember going into the library and there was this little box where you could fill out a form if you wanted to be on a commission. And it was all new to me, but I actually put my name in for the recreation commission. I've been active my whole life, an athlete, an outdoor enthusiast. So then um, the time came where I got a an email and I was very excited to get on board. Um, we just had our third baby in June um, and my kids are going to be very active and my oldest is already doing the tennis <clears throat> um, through the Concord Recreation Department and she's done Concord Carousel so uh, you know I'm just excited to be engaged and learn more and yep that's me. <laughs> and Jen you're leaving out that your husband won the Sleepy Hollow 5k road race this past weekend. Yeah yes yeah, so very we're fast. family. <laughs> He's very I mean, we, both, we both couldn't do it because then we have three kids, no one watching. So <laughs> next year I'll do it. But anyways, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Matt, you're next on my screen. Hey, I'm not actually a member of the Recreation Commission, but I am the liaison from the select board of the town. So I'm just here to uh, check out what's going on and uh, whenever needed, provide any guidance. Thanks. So welcome. Uh, Jim? Hi, hi, Adam. Welcome uh, to Concord and to the uh, the Rec Commission here. I've been on the commission about three or four months, so I'm relatively new and I'm learning the ropes. And uh, it's, been, it's been a great learning experience for me in the last um, few months. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have a couple of small kids uh, and they're very much involved in the Concord Rec program. So for me, it's kind of nice to see you know, how, how everything works on the commission side of things and town government and things like that. So, um, but yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. And Amrath sent in um, some info on the chat. So Amrath, if you want to say it yourself, you're welcome to, otherwise I can introduce you. Oh, there he is. Hey, welcome, Adam. Um, I've been, uh, I, I'm not on the Red Commission. I'm in the uh, liaison from FinCom and I've been on the FinCom for about three months now. So welcome aboard and uh, I'll, I'll connect with you offline and see how I can help. Great. 
Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, so, Adam, you're joining a, a great commission of people with um, various experiences, various, uh, you know, backgrounds and, and professional um, contributions. So we're really lucky to have this, this group of five. Um, next thing on our agenda is um, Henry, who is the other new face on this call. Um, Henry, and I will not pronounce your last name correctly, so I'm just going to say your first name. I hope that's okay. Um, Henry is here tonight. He is doing an Eagle Scout project um, and is hoping to build a baseball scoreboard um, to be installed at Rideout Park. Um, and Henry was asked to come to the Recreation Commission and present that project to you all for um, approval for him to move forward to the next steps, which would include a meeting with uh, Public Works. And once that is done, um, the proposal would be sent on to the town manager's office. So I'm going to pass the microphone to Henry and I'm going to share a document um, with some photos that he can speak to. So Henry, whenever you are ready, buddy, go ahead and um, go ahead. Uh, so first off, thank you guys for having me. Um, a little introduction. My name is Henry Velosky. I'm a senior in high school at CCHS. Uh, and I'm also a Boy Scout in Troop 132 in Concord. Um, so uh, for my Eagle project, I want to build a scoreboard. I think um, I, I may have given the wrong information. I, in, as part of the process, I've been talking to Concord Carlisle Youth Baseball, um, who's my beneficiary, and they actually would prefer I have it at Emerson. So the proposal is for a scoreboard at Emerson, the large field. Um, so I kind of got the idea just from I've I played baseball my most of my entire life. Um, I used to go to um, the after school program at uh, Hunt and Harvey Wheeler. Um, I used to watch the baseball games when there was they had them at the field, um, and I just I they didn't, they didn't have a scoreboard, so I never knew what the score was. But I I figured it was a good project to help um, give to the the program. Um, so as far as Oh, well, I guess I can talk about the project first. Um, so you can see on the screen uh, is the general layout of the um, board. Um, I had a, a contractor, uh, Mr. John Grace. Uh, he designed or he used my design to, to draw a schematic drawing um, below of the front and back. Um, we had initially said it was a three by six. We changed to a four by eight um, just because simply because material is easier to obtain in that size and we don't want to have to cut it down. Um, so essentially what the design is, it's a, a thin sheet of aluminum um, bolted to a, a plywood board, pressure treated, um, which is then bolted to uh, two four by fours, uh, which are then uh, cemented into the ground. Uh, and that's, so that's just the general design. Uh, and then above is the general outlook of what it will kind of look like. Um, the one thing major note difference is that the CCYB has a logo that they would like me to use at the top, um, but they were not able to get it to me. Um, They're working on getting me a file to print out. Um, but so that, that will be at the top, but everything else is generally the same. Um, the operation of it is what is chalk. Um, so for the black boxes represent the chalkboard um, and they would be, and there would be like a, a box, a metal box with a lock on it um, that holds chalk so that the board can be operated, um, which fits in nicely with the CCYB program because they have other locks around um, town and they give out um, a code to the coaches at the beginning of each year. Um, so it would um, be pretty smooth in terms of usage. Um, my line of approvals, as I said, I had my design is approved by a contractor. Um, I got approval from CCYB. Uh, I'm here seeking approval from the Recreation Commission. Um, and then I am planning on a meeting uh, later this week with uh, Mr. Aaron Miklosko. Um, and then I'm going to have a meeting with the select board uh, on the 8th of November. Um, so I mentioned the scoreboard is going to be at Emerson uh, on the 90 field because the other field is being converted to a softball field, I was told. Um, 90 field is a large diamond. Um, and it'll, it'll be on the, or I'm playing currently on the third base side. Um, 
probably about 20 feet down from um, third base itself, um, but in line with the, uh, the dugout fence. Um, timeline, I don't think that the actual construction will take me more than two or three days. Um, the, there, are, there are holes that need to be dug uh, with an auger, um, four and a half feet down. Um, but the actual process of actually installing, digging and installing shouldn't take more than a day or two. Um, based on my general timeline, I'm hoping to complete it by mid to late November. Uh, my birthday is in is December 16th uh, and you need to have your Eagle project completed before then. So uh, that's, that's just my, my timeline. Uh, I think that is all, I've hit all the general points. Um, I'm open to any questions you may have about the project. Thanks, Henry. Yeah. It looks it looks really great. Yeah, Henry, it's, this is Paul Von High. It's a, gr a great idea, and I'm glad you're doing it. I just a couple of things you said. It, this will be located um, where in the outfield or in the foul territory in third base? What would you say that was? The foul ter territory of third base, um, kind of aligned with. I don't know if, if you. If, I'm sure you've been to the field. There's a dug. The dugout has like a a chain link fence so it would be um parallel to that set back a few feet um just so that i figured um with in terms of i don't know how much you guys know about baseball but uh, a lot of righty hitters and they tend to pull it down the third baseline and so if i have it facing uh perpendicular to the direction of the base i feel like it would get hit a lot which is not ideal for preservation in the future so um yeah so i guess to answer your question foul territory um, maybe 20 feet beyond third base and 10 feet back, five, 10 feet back from the foul line. So can it be visible from, from spectators? Where, where would it be best viewed from? So I, I was, I, that was part of my, my process of thinking. Um, the, the, often people will sit there. There's no formal um, stands there. So often parents will sit, um, on the side of their child, so home and home and away. Um, people will sit along the the first baseline and the third baseline, um, and it was a little difficult to do um, to to see both, obviously, without having it in the outfield. But um, because the outfield is quite far and the scoreboard is not massive, I wanted to, the main thing was I wanted it to be able to be used, um, which I figured would higher usage if it was closer. So the idea is that it's set back a little bit. Actually, no. Sorry, one of the figures I gave was wrong. I meant five to 10 feet from the fence, um, which lines the sidewalk. Um, so that way it's visible from the, um, the first base sideline parents and the, the fans that are in on the, the third base can either can mm -hmm. like turn around and see it without having to cause too much trouble. But it's out of the play and out of most of where the fans sit. Thank you. And Henry, off the top of my head, I can't remember what the, um, we had a Girl Scout who um, did the scoreboard for the softball field at Emerson Park. Does your design match hers closely? Do they, do they look the same? Did you take a peek at uh, that? Yeah, so I've, I've looked at it. Um, it mirrors it in some respects and not in others. It's similar in that it's the same dimensions. Um, and I, it, it's, it's similar in that it's, it's it, both of them are four by fours with a plywood and a sheet of metal. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is that mine is maroon as requested by CCYB. Um, and is hers my, green? The, is it green over there? Her, yes, yeah, it's green. Okay, that's what I mean. um, And also the um, attachment is slightly different um, per the recommendation of my uh, contractor I'm working with. So the it's the the sign is bolted um, <clears throat> to the plywood like theirs is, but instead of having it's almost like an L bracket to attach the plywood to the four by four, um, it's um, bolted through the back of the four by four into the plywood, uh, which should add a, provide added security. Um, and then also, um, and this is kind of a minute detail, but um, to preserve the wood, because I noticed some of the wood is 
not not like horribly rotting, but not in the best condition where the ground contact. Um, as you can see in the, the diagram, it's, the concrete is raised slightly um, um, so that the water flows off, so it should be able to last um, a very long time. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments for Henry? Uh, I have one. Sure, Pete. Um, as the um, Public Works Department agreed to take care of the maintenance of this, or the school grounds committee? Um, Henry's going to be meeting with Aaron McClesco, who is um, the uh, one of the superintendents for Public Works tomorrow, I think mm -hmm. he said. So Henry, that would be a really important question to ask Aaron when you when you chat with him tomorrow. Thank you. And Matt has his hand raised. Go ahead, Matt. <clears throat> yeah, so again, I'm, I'm not a member of the Rec Commission and um, I'm only speaking for myself because the select board hasn't looked at this yet as a body, but um, anticipating your visit to us, Henry, I'm just curious, have you reviewed the town sign bylaw? And you know, does this scoreboard fall within its purview? I mean, is that the reason you're coming to see us? Um, and uh, I do see that that uh, softball sign did come to us back in 2016, but for some reason can't access the minutes of the meeting that uh, reference that. Um, and it'd be nice to kind of understand how that process worked back when it was, um, you know, done. And, and then the other request I would have is like a, a plot plan, you know, something where you show the baseball diamond, you show the fence, and you show kind of where this the, the sign's going to sit uh, relative to the park. Um, just it would really help a lot to understand the context. Um, so addressing the, I guess, first your, your latter point, um, I do have pictures of where it's located, so I, I, I forgot to uh, email them to uh, Ms. Keown, but I do have those for the select board, so I will certainly bring those um, to give you context of where it's going to be more. Um, and the other item, I'm, I'm not sure what you're referencing, so I suppose I'm not familiar with it. Um, the reason I was coming to the select board um, was because upon talking with my advisors um, and my contractor and uh, Ms. McKeown, the process seems to be um, contractor, CCYB, recreation, um, and the select board. So that's just kind of the process that I've been following. I think the reason that the select board is on that list is because we uh, are the ones that control the sign by law, but that's just my guess. Um, it'd be nice, again, to try to make sure we know. I don't, I don't think it's just because, hey, we're, we're in charge, we you know, prove everything. Uh, there, there's gotta be some bylaw that says we need to, and, and I believe that's the one. Um, but I couldn't, I just briefly just scanned the document and I couldn't find a reference to a scoreboard. So uh, on the other hand, I didn't see any exclusion for scoreboards. So uh, it'd be nice to kind of get a clarity on, on that when we walk into the room on, on Monday, because otherwise I, I think we may be confused. I think so, Matt. From my understanding, in the last in the time period that I've been here, we've um, been the uh, welcome recipients to a number of different uh, scout and both uh, Girl Scout, Boy Scout projects having to do with scoreboards, having to do with building benches at the tennis courts, um, and it's a nice uh, sort of partnership with the scouts. So I think. Oh, the, by the way, I I. Absolutely agree. No, I know. I, so I, I think the select board piece is almost it, it may be somewhat ceremonial and just you know due for the stamp of approval once they go through that process because typically Anna's already taken a look and made sure that it you know makes sense within the grounds that it's going to be on. Is that a correct assumption, Anna? Yes. And that it's not violating various bylaws. That's sort of it's fished out from there and it. From my understanding, I think the select board piece is like a, a, you know, you guys get to see it, have eyes on it, and, you know, um, 
sort of appreciate the project. So. And Henry, tomorrow, um, we'll, I'll email you and I'll get you a link for the bylaw that Matt's referring to, and we can review that together and make sure that you feel prepared um, for Monday. Yeah. Okay. Henry, All right, thanks. When did you Sorry start to complicate scouts? things. No, that's, that's a good question, Matt. Thanks. <clears throat> Um, so Casey, I think um, we should vote that the board or the commission um, approves Henry's site plans as presented and supports the request to um, install this new amenity at Emerson Park uh, if approved by uh, Public Works and the select board as well. So I will make a motion with what uh, Anna just said. Would anyone like to second? I'll second, okay. it's Pete. Great, thanks Pete. And I'll do a roll call. Casey Atkins, yes. Paul Bohm? Yes. Pete Funkhauser? Yes. Jen Lutz? Yes. Jim Howard? Yes. Thank you guys. And thank you, Henry, for your service and for your work and your commitment to the Scouts. How long have you been in Scouts for? Uh, I started Cub Scouts in first grade, uh, which is the first year you can start. And I've been in Cub Scouts and then Boy Scouts in sixth grade. So ever since right. first grade. Well, thank you so much for your journey of service. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Thanks, you, Henry. Henry. I'll email you tomorrow. Have a good evening. Okay. Bye-bye. So well. Great. Thanks, you guys. We've um, we've had a good run of, of getting community members interested in installing some new amenities at the parks. And this is just another great example of the opportunities with the collaboration of these uh, community groups. So excited to see Henry's final project if Public Works and Select Board uh, approve. So um, that's great. Moving on to the next piece. I wanted to share um, our current version of the Envision Concord plan. So um, as a recap, the Select Board has requested um, some feedback on how departments are doing in meeting the big ideas as identified in the long range plan. Um, I've been working on a document that I sent to you all. And I also sent it over to Kate Hodges for review. Um, and this is where we're at. Let me share what we have. And Matt, um, I know you have to jump here on another meeting tonight. So any feedback that you have that you'd like to share with the group on how we're doing with the process and uh, what we're sharing would be great. So everybody, um, let me scroll all the way to the top. Try well, uh, one comment is I think that you and uh, the planning department have set the bar in terms of uh, the the feedback uh, process. So you know this is the most complete um, ones of these that I've seen. Um, from a group, I would say maybe with the exception of the plan, planning department, but it's a close race. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Again, I, uh, it's a blessing and a curse to be thorough. <laughs> um, so everybody, the, the pieces that are new on here that I wasn't sure of, and I had to have Kate um, provide some feedback on since I, I sent you the draft was, um, where is it? The one about the dog park. Um, and I knew that there was a meeting that had happened discussing the possibility of a dog park, um, but I wasn't part of those meetings. So she added those pieces, if I can find it. Um, these right here. So there was a feasibility study that was done in 2016, 2017. Um, I do remember some background conversations of there was a, a very good response from the community and, and uh, input from the community, but at the time there wasn't a space that was feasible for the park. So um, we have it listed as complete in terms of considering the development, um, but it's not to say that, you know, perhaps we need to do a, a piece of this investigation with our strategic planning initiative for recreation. So that's that's a new piece that wasn't on the document that I emailed to you, um, as well as uh, this item, action eight, providing walkways or running trails for more appreciation and recreational use in nature appreciation of Hassabit River and Neshoba Brook. Um, and Kate updated this piece as well, speaking to some of the phases of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail um, 
as well as efforts to restore trails at the, the parks that are listed there. So um, again, this exercise involves many departments collaborating together and, and being charged with completing these initiatives um, as a team. So, you know, some of these that recreation was listed in other departments have taken more of a lead um, in completing them or, or working on them. And this is one of those, those items. So um, without going through it all, does anybody have any questions, any feedback? things it looks like I may have forgotten. I have one question um, on, on the dog park. Is it, does the dog park potential, the issue fall under the recreation department or is that a, a joint issue with natural resources and, and other commission? You know, who's, who's a purview as a dog park? That's, that's a good question. You know, I know plenty of recreation departments that do manage and maintain dog parks, um, but most of those departments are parks and recreation, and we are not parks and recreation. We are just recreation. So I would see a dog park certainly involving us, but, um, you know, in terms of the maintenance and management of one of those spaces, not being a parks and recreation department, I wouldn't see us necessarily being um, the person that was solely responsible for it. But that's just my opinion. There haven't been any formal discussions on that sort of yeah, but just just curious. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the other thing, I, in looking through this, I don't know if, if it's missing or if it's appropriate, but the picking up on the previous discussion about Concord Youth Baseball, the, the collaborations between <clears throat> Recreation Department and um, uh, citizen-run programs like youth baseball, youth soccer, um, those, those kind of collaborations, I think those are really important. I don't know which which idea it supports, but it, it may be just thinking about, because that is an activity that comes before us, you know, and, and those are important components of town recreation, although they're not, you know, it's not a public entity. So I don't know if it's appropriate, but I think it's an important collaboration. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, and looking at the specifics of some of the big ideas and action items, it, it where I see them referring to and looking for action on, um, you know, collaboration with public private partnerships and such is more in the economic vitality mindset and not necessarily in a recreation use management, whatever you want to call it uh, mindset. So there's not a natural space where I feel like I could put that right now, but there is at the bottom, I thought it was on here. There was a space where you could add um, some suggestions. Uh, it looks like I didn't copy it onto this document. So I could, you know, figure out a way to put that in there if the conversation on uh, at the select board meeting, you know, offers that sort of opportunity. Yeah, the, the idea is to, if you, there are goals that weren't anticipated by the plan, but that you now feel are strategic goals, that it's just good to note those and we'll put them on a list. Sure. And bring it up, there may be other public-private collaborations across town, which are very beneficial. So this is an example. Mm -hmm. Great. Anybody else? Any other feedback? Um, so I submit this on, I believe it's the 11th for presentation on November 15th. Um, you're all welcome to, you know, sign. It's a Zoom meeting. Uh, you're welcome to tune in and listen. I'm curious to hear uh, the other presentations as well. It's uh, it's sometimes these exercises are, are really good to have to force the hand and make you take a peek at these things. So I'm, I'm excited to see how everyone else is feeling like they're doing. Uh, with and goals. early submissions are welcomed. Great. Because we integrating all these things into one view is going to be ex in a, a interesting exercise. <laughs> um, well, if anybody... Um, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say thank you for pulling this together and appreciate that you've been thorough. And Paul, great point about the collaboration with other youth sports and uh, public-private entities. I think that makes sense, especially, Matt, I believe you brought up with the list of public-private partnerships, there's sort of quite a few that relate to recreation. Um, so that I think is very, very relevant. So. Great pickup. 
Thanks. Um, so Matt, I'll get this over to you guys then by the end of the week if I don't get any feedback from anyone else on the rec commission before then. So come in your way. Okay, thanks. Welcome. Great, thanks everybody. Um, <clears throat> Next piece, uh, just a brief update on the recreation facility strategic planning update. Um, so I presented our CPC application uh, to the commission, the CPC um, committee a couple of weeks ago, mid-October sometime. Um, we submitted it along with letters of support from natural resources and uh, the public works commission. Um, as well as the letter of support that you all provided. So felt like it was a, a strong application and a good presentation. Paul, I don't know if you have any uh, feedback on the process. I know we usually get to that at the end, but. Well, we haven't discussed it. I, I think it's it's kind of a no brainer, but we have, and uh, the, the town council said it's eligible. So that's good news. Um, so I think it's, uh, you know, the deliberation process. The, uh, I guess my only question on that, it, you know, it's, um, it's a good good source of support and, and funds, but of course it won't happen. It won't kick off until after town town meeting, next year when it's voted. And I'm just wondering if there's anything we can do in the commission, wearing my commission hat here, not my CPC hat, you know, to jumpstart the process. I know we want to hire a consultant. Are, are we going to wait for that funding? Are, are we going to work on an RFP? Are we going? To, can we do any spade work to kind of make sure that? the consultant can hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, so yes, there's definitely some background work that we can do. So I'll be out on maternity leave until um, end of February-ish. Um, so I'm hoping um, once I get back, we could start creating that formal scope of work in an updated RFP, um, you know, just to have it prepared, really spelled out to the level that we want it to include, you know, detail-wise get permissions from um, our liaison at finance, Brandon Roberts, that it looks good, it's meeting all their expectations. So like you said, Paul, when that funding hopefully is awarded at town meeting, um, we, we have that document already ready uh, for posting. So that would be huge. And then, you know, the process thereafter is a couple of weeks for submissions and then um, the review of, of applicants. So it would be great to get that started in, in March is what I'm hoping. And um, Adam will be running the rec commission meetings while I'm out. So, you know, the January, February meetings potentially. Um, and at, at those meetings, you could discuss as well if, if Pete and Paul, you still wanted to be on the strategic planning subcommittee, um, you know, getting together with Adam offline, starting to review those documents together just to get an idea of what this uh, scope of work and RFP process would involve. He'd be happy to do that with you as well. Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to continue the those conversations. I can't speak for Pete, but I think those were fun. I, I as well. Great. So I'll um, I'll get Adam up to speed with what we have created and done already, and then um, connect to you three via email for some more meetings. Um, great. Any other questions on strategic planning, the CPC application, those timelines, anything like that? <clears throat> Um, the next piece I wanted to review, and again, selfishly, for some reasons of me being out, I want to just make sure everybody's on the same page with, with timelines. Um, but we had discussed um, at one of our previous meetings that the Recreation Commission um, would be supporting the Recreation Department with um, reviewing budget documents and, and um, you know, providing feedback on, on what our budget numbers are going to look like for FY23. And the Recreation Commission also is responsible for submitting an annual report. Um, I did email out the calendars, Let's see if I can share that, um, for the budget season, we'll call it. <clears throat> and why isn't that showing? Um, it won't share my PDF for some reason. Sorry. Show our windows. There we go. Um, so here's the calendar for the budget season. Um, 
we are in the process of uh, right now finalizing our general fund operating requests. Those are our accounts um, for recreation administration, which is um, my salary, as well as um, the operation of the building itself, the Hunt Recreation Center. So I'm working with facilities and the town manager's office uh, to prepare those requests. And then the next big piece is, <clears throat> again, um, the annual report's not listed on here, but I was given a date of um, mid-January that those will be due. So um, for the December meeting, it would be important to have that document prepared, Casey, and I can send you um, the reports from last year so you can see the format of it and get the commission to approve that um, so Adam can help you get it submitted um, in mid-January since that will be before your January meeting. So just wanted to make everybody aware of these timelines, um, welcome you to participate in the process, you know, to whatever degree you are interested in doing that. Um, I'm preparing documents right now. So Adam and team, um, you know, can update some final pieces uh, in mid January to prepare for the submissions um, on January 28th. This is our big one. So just a timeline and a heads up. Um, Andy is working really hard as well to get all the BD documents organized and um, we're feeling really confident with our, our processes this year for submission. So again, nothing I need any of you to do right now. Just wanted to make you all aware of the schedule that we are jumping into in the next couple of months here. <clears throat> um, let's see. If there's no questions on that, we can jump to um, the field use application. So if you recall, at our last meeting, you all approved the um, indoor facility rental form and rates. Thank you for that. Um, and we uh, took a, a break on the outdoor field use application forms. Um, I'm still collecting some user feedback from other departments on tournament rates as requested. Um, and in thinking about it again, I, I want to have a meeting with Public Works, who maintains the budgets for the field operation to get their feedback as well on the rates and the document. Um, once I get the feedback from them, then I think we'll be in a better place as a commission to discuss those rental fees again and, and make sure that we too agree with, um, you know, the rates and processes that Public Works wants to follow. So I will um, keep working on that and Adam likely will uh, bring that to one of the next meetings if I'm not available um, for your review and approval at that point in time. <clears throat> um, let's see. And that is all I have on extra stuff. Um, in terms of department updates, Andy, you want to take it away and, and give the BD updates, please? Off of mute, I go. So just want to cover a plethora of things. Uh, start with membership. Um, I know it's always on mind, everyone's mind a little bit. Okay, what is the BD membership number? Uh, right now we're at uh, 1,126. So with it, that's of, uh, we'll say November 1st. And with it, it's a number that has grown uh, by 26 new families over the last 12 months and has had uh, 100 new memberships over the last three months. So that, those memberships do involve uh, three months people. Uh, they do involve our annual and recurring, uh, but certainly some positive trends that we uh, like seeing. Uh, our front desk does do some scans in regards to traffic in the door. Uh, we don't uh, manage those per se with um, our activities, whether it be a master swim or otter swim or high school lifeguarding class, something like that. But it is that general access piece. And just a, a quick little glimpse, October of 2020, we had 163 people per day. Uh, as we bump to October of 2021, a year later, uh, we're up to 277 a day. So that's over 100 uh, additional uh, trafficking people uh, at our desk, which is really positive as far as uh, comfort level, uh, people just using us and finding more opportunities to come in the door. 
Uh, recent promotions, um, November has us doing a Veterans Day slash uh, active military uh, promotion for the rest of the month. Uh, it's a no uh, $99 joining fee. So we put that out uh, in various forms between Facebook, um, our website with constant contact and hope to get a little traffic that way and support that uh, important group or groups. Uh, we're also doing a free uh, training session for any new members or new clients uh, to our building and with it um, a 15% off uh, piece if they uh, get into personal training. So that personal training piece um, is some, a variety of different packages between one, five and 10 right now. So as that went out in the Living Concord magazine, went out in our newsletter uh, and whatnot, uh, hoping to again, uh, sort of uh, jumpstart um, personal training a bit for people and, and, and sort of share the value that goes with it. We're also doing a piece for our current members that's uh, essentially 10% off if they get a, a 10 uh, session package piece, which is on the larger side, but also ju them just making a commitment to uh, uh, get in a program with our trainers um, is certainly valuable. To highlight uh, the Sleepy Hollow race uh, that just happened this past Saturday morning, uh, again, a, a star from the Lutz family won it and just in there. So that was a uh, kudos, absolutely. But a, a great collaborative effort between Hunt staff and BD staff uh, to pull off something uh, that you know, typically has been in their neck of the woods, uh, nicely moved up to the BD Center uh, for, we'll say exposure to us, uh, which is nice, but I think we also had a good setup uh, with a fun run course that went around the high school to a 5K course that followed the, the Mighty Moose course uh, that happened earlier in September uh, and just had you know, great support, even in the rain. Uh, we had uh, over 201 signups, uh, better than 150 actually participants when it came to that uh, poor weather, but great support by Concord Police Department. It had a safe event, a fun event. Um, you know, we appreciate uh, it being a profitable uh, element, but also just the exposure, just the opportunity for people to get out and do something. Certainly the, the Halloween timing was great when it came to costumes. Uh, we've got a couple posts out there as far as some good photos. Uh, this uh, is Pete. Can I interrupt you for a minute? No, go ahead. I'd like, I'd like to thank you, Andy, because I walked by you in the middle of this rainy race and you were standing there cheering people along down Main Street as though there were no rain at all. Congratulations to you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was a good effort. You know, we had high school um, volunteers and, and scouts on the corners as well. So, um, I mean, across the board, uh, just to, to see the participation, uh, we had a couple walkers that just said, yep, I'm going to put up with this rain and keep on going. So uh, a fun event. Thanks, Pete. And one more, one more piece on that. So as Andy and I have really dug into the budgets, as, as you may or may not recall, we're slated to lose about $497,000 this year. It's very expensive to run a pool um, and many of those expenses aren't recoverable with programming. So what Andy's worked really hard to do is explore that a little bit more, unpack it. Um, and we've made some decisions on new programs that his team is, is starting to implement and the race is one of them. So any fitness-based special event that we in the past have run, typically through um, the hunt side of the operation will now run under Andy's side of the operation. So they are going to join us in that special event arena and start to facilitate some of these things more often for the revenue involved. Um, the overhead on running a race is um, relatively low, all things considered. Certainly we can do better than what we did this past weekend potentially with you know more hoopla and, and a little more um, additives, but Andy did a great job budgeting it and preparing the event um, and they, they received a good amount of revenue from it. So that's a huge new addition to the BD Center. Um, and with the personal training initiatives that he's doing, again, um, he you know, was able to look at the budget numbers and recognize that our personal training revenues are down this quarter. Um, so what can we do to try and bring some more people in, get some new clients, these promos. So. We're going to be exploring those opportunity areas is what we're calling them and um, you know making some decisions to try new things add new programs add new people um, and he's done a great job this this fall kind of jumping in feet first <laughs> with some of these 
these things. So props to Andy and his team. It's certainly new and um, it's a big undertaking for a small team of people up there. So just wanted to add that in. Yep, and, and with that said, you know, some, um, you know, new staff in place. Uh, we have Anne Boudreau in as our aquatics manager, um, you know, getting her perspective on things. And, you know, she's mo moving forward with a December swim camp. You know, it's, it's just sort of laying the groundwork for, okay, how do we learn some lessons uh, in an easy time of year when, we, when we're in between with some programming and set it up for something in the spring after the otter season is over, something in the summertime that, you know, certainly has... Uh, a lot of good um, oversight and collaborative pieces with Hunt uh, since they're so busy with camps. But, you know, we've got a, a quieter building in the summer. So let's start learning some lessons now as far as how to do some of that programming later. Um, we're not going to have a quiet building this coming Sunday morning. Uh, we are hosting a, a mini master swim meet. It's a partnership piece uh, with the high school uh, as their friends and family of that swim and dive team. It's a rental for us, but you know it's, it's certainly some workload. It's certainly some displacement as far as members. But Sunday morning from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, we're just going to be one of the unique spots in New England as far as running something for the Masters older group as far as an event. And with it, we've got a great facility as far as pool deck space. Uh, we, we turned it into 25 meters versus 25 yards. So... Uh, our exposure to just the fact that we're unique, just the fact that we give some of our in-house uh, master swimmers and adults the opportunity to do something so close to home is pretty special. So, um, you know, we're just trying to piggyback on, you know, we'll say who's in front of us as far as talent. And certainly the high school uh, is a talented group and we're going to, uh, we took last year off, but the fact that we're back and doing it this year is, is kudos to them and uh, we're going to support them when we can. Um, Away from that, you know, just uh, a busy place, which has been great. Uh, please come our way. If you ever, anyone on this call wants a tour, uh, wants a free pass for a day, just let me know. We'd love to have you experience it firsthand and be able to give me, um, you know, the good and the bad feedback would be fantastic. Andy, you know, I'm a big fan of those, um, those family nights is there any way to get some of those slots a little bit earlier in the night for families so that people with younger kids can come yeah so we're so we're, you know certainly got some busyness in november with some holidays and whatnot but as we get quieter uh, in december we're looking to see you know when when we do um, more of that open house and invite the new people our way uh, we've had it uh, fr friday family fun nights as you know we'll say during some of our um, you know, reservation periods uh, was successful uh, to do an open slate piece. Um, yep, we're, we're going to find some opportunities. You know, we're, we're just getting a little busier with, with the swim meet season with the otters and the high school uh, coming right after Thanksgiving. But uh, we'll obviously uh, want to do that. And, you know, getting the, the earlier time for families makes total sense. Casey or, or Jen, what would be, you know, a more doable time frame for a drop-in open house sort of experience for families with young children? Um, hmm. I would probably say like um, the weekends might be best. <clears throat> and I know weekends probably a prime time. Um, Andy, when do you normally do these? Like Friday night? Is that what you, Friday? So we could, do, you know, it, it, it plays off what else is happening. Um, you know, we're going to have a, a better opportunity in December once we wrap up a, a lot of our programming that sort of takes a, a little bit of a break. We do some pop-up classes. We do some one-offs in regards to swim lessons just to sort of set up the winter season. So, you know, looking at uh, the month of December, we'll, we'll see some of those Saturdays that I think would resonate with families. And, you know, some of that morning times that, um, you know, sort of fill that void as far as, okay, what to do with the kids. Um, hopefully we'd be that avenue. Yeah, definitely wait till your programming um, like quiets down a little bit. And the weekends might be better because rather than, you know, one adult figure bringing the kids, both could go and be a family thing. And the, the husband could say, oh, I, I like this aspect. And then the other kids and the wife might like something else. So um, just a thought. Yeah. I would and, say like, uh, you know, like more like mid mornings or mid afternoon, maybe not around dinner time. <laughs> yeah, not in the past, at least. You don't want us I, I, over there. <laughs> Casey, yeah, what do you think as far as timing goes for Jim? I, I think you can sort of, it depends. So Jen, your kids are like 
you have a baby and you have a, five, a kindergartner and a, and a kindergartner and a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> and a toddler. So you've got that like morning time that you've got to like kill daylight right before the morning, like before the noon, like 2 PM nap, basically. Uh, no, no one naps except for the baby. <laughs> oh, I'm so yeah, sorry. So sad. I love naps. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh. um, my kids are a little bit older. So I think you've got, you know, a programming thing where you have slightly older elementary school kids, where if you think about when they'll eat is probably somewhere in the like six to seven range. And then they're going to bed, but they can stretch it on a weekend night a little bit later. But sort of in, you know, in that after school to 6 p.m. time frame. But again, like a fifth grader has more stamina than a kindergartner. But I think Jen's right. There's some nice opportunity for like a morning or early afternoon family swim time on the weekend or during some of the vacation days when people are looking to fill some time. Jim, maybe you have some thoughts, too. Yeah, thank you. My only thought was uh, Wednesday afternoons, uh, there's half day at the elementary school level. So I don't know, Andy, if you have a lot going on programming wise on Wednesday afternoons or if it's free, I think that would be a, a great time for people, especially when it gets colder out to bring their kids and, and check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Andy, another thing is for publicizing otters, um, what goes into that for signing up and what are the age ranges? So the, it's the whole spectrum of it. So right now otters, um, you know, came on board early in the process. Uh, we did tryouts in August, we did tryouts in September. They started September 27th. So otters is essentially full at this point. And it's a, it's a program that runs into, we'll say the first part of March. So, it's all ages, you know, we've got the five-year-olds we, you know, who are established and, and can swim and participate in a practice uh, to, you know, the young high school kids to a degree. So it's, it's been a successful program um, and with it, uh, we're getting into the meat season. They've already had one uh, fun, you know, sort of a blue-white in, inner squad meet on October 24th. We've got a meet coming up in December. Uh, most of our meets are home, which is uh, makes for some busyness, but you know, easier on our families. We actually just have one away meet this year, and one, um, and we're seeing where the championship meet will fall. But uh, it'll, it'll certainly be away. But uh, you know, not sure of the logistics on that one yet. The league's still getting organized. But you know, the otters um, piece will revisit uh, and and come back uh, our way in late spring uh, or or the summertime. Uh, but right now, a pretty vibrant program as far as winter. So. For, I, and sorry, Amrith, you've had your hand up. I'm just thinking for publicity for it. So when you have kids who are in swim lessons and even if they're in the like parent, parent, baby parent ones, where it shows you like how you can step up to each level swimming and step into otters and have that be like a feeder system to it or so, sort of show that connectiveness to it. Cause like, mm -hmm. admittedly, I've been doing swim lessons at BD with my kids for years. And I totally forgot otters was an option to get them into at some point. Yep. And, you know, those, those swim lessons, you know, uh, you know, build you up into being a solid swimmer. It's, it's a different element as far as a, a swim team, as far as commitment and practice and going for a whole, whole hour and all that goes with it. But uh, know that, you know, our, our feeder system is, is our swim lessons. Um, and with it, you know, we also often see that that's, uh, the, the kid that's the, the the best when it comes to the swim team that they've they've got some structure as well as following directions. It's good feedback, Casey. I've been, I've been thinking about some cool side signage, you know, some A frames and, and passing those messages when parents are literally sitting in the pool with their kids. So some good food for thought. That's a good it idea. Sounds like it's also a very successful full program at this point, which is great. So my apologies, Amrith, you very kindly had your hand up. No, that's okay. Um, mine's a very quick question. I can wait. I don't want to interrupt your thought. Go for it. Okay. Um, you started off with a very interesting update. While you were talking, I was looking at the BD Center and the facilities. But when you started, you mentioned some numbers on the number of people per day. How do those numbers compare to pre-COVID? You mentioned this year and last year, but are you getting back to close to pre-COVID? 
So with it, you know, the, the numbers pre-COVID, like 2018, uh, just looking at uh, October, uh, we were at 299 a day, uh, and now we're at 277. Wonderful. So we're, we're getting back to those, but, you know, if you look back into, we'll say 2010, we're like 400 a day. So, you know, pre-COVID, well, we're, we're getting close. Um, we were peaking um, at 354 in October. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, the fact that we're 277, we still got a ways to go. Okay. But we're getting back there. Yep. Good to hear. Thank you. That's all I have. Great. Uh, anything else, Andy, that you want to share? That is it. Thank you. Great. Good updates. Um, so from the other side of the operation, in this report, um, Adam will be doing moving forward. Um, so facility updates, it's been a rainy week since it's open, but Emerson Park's playground is open and available. So if you're looking to get your kids or your grandkids out, um, it's a beautiful renovation, um, a nice accessible surface to welcome kids and families of all abilities. Um, it, it's really beautiful. So props to Public Works and the team, uh, Kilmoyley Construction, that finalized that, that project for us. So it looks beautiful. Head over there and take a peek. Um, they constructed a new tennis shed for us at the Emerson Tennis Court, so you might see that new shed. We share it with CCYB, um, but we have two separate spaces, so it's, it's a great new space, much bigger than our last one. <clears throat> um, the fields will remain open across town for rent through uh, November 15th, and then we're closing grass fields for the season. Um, the Doug White fields up at the high school, the turf fields that we book for folks after school hours will actually remain open for rentals all winter. Public Works invested in some machinery that can safely remove the snow from those surfaces. Um, so a nice opportunity to bring in some more rental funds potentially this winter. Um, CCYS, Youth Soccer, they're already planning on running some clinics up there this winter and things of that sort. So that'll be a nice addition for those that potentially do want to rent fields in the winter. Um, another piece, I don't know if you recall, but a couple months ago, um, I presented some information. There was a resident on Hubbard Street who was interested in fundraising for a tennis backboard at Emerson Park. Um, she completed her efforts and raised $3,117 um, from the park neighborhood, um, which is great. So that check um, has been sent to finance and will need to be accepted by the select board. Um, I'm not sure which meeting it will be on the agenda for, but soon. And then we're hoping to purchase a backboard and have it installed at the park uh, sometime this spring when the snow is gone. So that'll be a great new amenity for the park. Um, certainly the best fiscal plan we possibly could have with the fundraising efforts of a a community that's invested in keeping it up and, and uh, using it. So that's really exciting. Emerson Park is really going through a great facelift <laughs> this year with so many additions from yeah. you know, Henry's scoreboard to this, to the new softball field. It's just really gonna be a beautiful, beautiful park once it's open. <clears throat> um, summer camp registration will open on February 9th for those um, that are interested or can spread the word. Um, we sold out of a lot of our camps within the first week last year, and we're anticipating that happening again. Um, we will be bringing back all of our camp programs. So we've kind of triaged um, our priority camps over the last two years with COVID um, and have prepared for uh, smaller groups and mm -hmm. um, the inability for groups to mix throughout the course of the day. But with the regulations as flexible as they are now, we're planning on bringing back AM and PM care, our arts and rec program, um, our half day summer school based camp, um, as well as trekkers and some additional specialty camps, including the camps that Andy mentioned, the BD Center will run, so a swim camp concept. So really excited about that. Um, we are increasing prices for camps, uh, $10 across the board. Minimum wage increases on January 1st to 1425. So this sort of um, very small adjustment helps to compensate for uh, that difference. And we haven't raised the prices in the last two years uh, because of COVID. So this should be hopefully an unimpactful uh, price raise, uh, but we will continue to remind people that we do have financial assistance available if they need it for any of our camps. 
Uh, this, this is Pete. I have a question. Sure. Um, shouldn't we pay our employees more than $14.50 an hour? And um, yes, and we do. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, a lot of them are. I'm very are sensitive away. about that because, you know, these people work hard yes. and it, it's not a lot of money for mm -hmm. them, but a little bit more helps. Um, yep. You don't have to answer the question. I'm just raising it. Secondly, um, $10 increase in fees for the people who participate. Um, maybe we should think about a higher increase in fees. And I know we give a lot of scholarships to people who have trouble paying for camp. Is that not true? We have money available. So maybe if we were able to charge a little bit more in this affluent community for people to send their kids to this wonderful program and use that money to, A, to pay her, the people who work there more, and B, to give better scholarships to families who can't afford it. Yeah, thanks for that feedback, Pete. Um, the town did go through an exercise the year, the summer that I started, so 2016, um, where we significantly reduced the price of our camps. We were seeing a pretty stagnant uh, enrollment year after year with not much growth. People, for the price range that we were offering at that point in time, people were choosing to go to some of the um, bigger, a little fancier camps, such yeah, as Concord yeah, Academy, yeah. Star Camps, things like that. Sure. Um, yeah. So we wanted to be the, the most affordable camp in town. And it the again, the option or the uh, decision to do that has certainly helped with our enrollment growth over the years. But I absolutely understand what you're saying. Um, the... The way that we work out um, how we pay our staff is all approved through the personnel board. It's a range based on experience. So for a brand new kid working for us, you know, a 16 year old, those ones typically are at minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And then um, all of our other staff are above there. And we raise, we give them a raise annually based on that minimum wage increase. So if somebody came to us, worked $15 an hour last year, minimum wage is going up 75 cents, that person also will shift up the ladder slightly. But yes, you can't uh, give these, their kids, a lot of them, you can't give these kids enough credit for the work that they do. It's a, it's a hard, thankless job, man. It's a long day. So yeah. we, um, we certainly are always looking for areas to help assure funding, you know, to make sure that we, we can pay these kids at rates that are competitive um, and worthy of the efforts that they put into their job. But, you know, Anna, along the lines, I, I'm sure we are the the affordable camp in town by a pretty wide margin. I don't know what that margin is, actually. Um, what is there a tolerance for a price increase more than ten dollars? I I, I I just don't know. In this, will that chase people away if we go to twenty dollars? Have we have we done a survey? Do we know? Do we have information along those lines? Um, the surveys that we do send out surveys annually and the surveys res responses, you know, we, we ask questions is the cost of camp appropriate for the services that you receive. Um, it's not a, you know, what is the monetary value you think this camp is worth sort of question. Um, people feel it's a very fair price. You know, it allows people, I think, to um, participate in camp for longer than you might be able to at a higher rate. So for the families that do need care for nine weeks in the summer, um, keeping it at, you know, that 300 to $400 range allows them to better budget for nine weeks of expenses versus $500 a week. Um, you know, it's a, it's a significant jump that way. It's not to say that we can't explore that a little bit more. Um, we, uh, we never have a loss running camp. It's a, it's a revenue maker for us for sure. And so we want to always be aware of that as well to make sure that, you know, our priority is serving the greatest number of our community members possible at rates that are attractive and affordable to them. Um, and, and this is one way that we've consistently done that was keeping these rates, you know, relatively the same. They've gone since I've started from 290 to this year, it'll be uh, 330, I think. So, you know, very gradual slight increase over the last four or five years. To add to that, and I mean, the just thinking of like the camp industry as a whole, especially in mass, I mean, every camp is increasing prices. So we're pretty much kind of on pace. I couldn't give you the dollar amount, but I, 
when I look at, when you look at pricing, I always look at how much per hour you're getting for your services. So instead of paying a babysitter 20 bucks an hour, 25 bucks an hour to be at your house, you're getting a better deal as, you know, let's just say it's $5 an hour. I'm in yeah. a big picture of it. So, yeah. Yeah. So certainly something um, that we can explore a little bit more and do, uh, you know, I can put Adam on some comparative uh, camp investigations, see, see what others are doing if they're going up a little bit higher. Um, you know, we have seen a great response and return of our, our families to camp, but there still are some families that um, are working remotely or, or potentially just don't need the services anymore. So we just want to make sure that we're, we're getting everybody back um, and they're comfortable coming back at the rates that we mm -hmm. have. Yeah, I, I do think getting data on this is, is be very worthwhile. I, I'm not sure how to do that, but rather than just kind of guess and look, you know, I, I think we're, we need to be generous to uh, as much as we can to the staff and, and to the residents in town. So how do you balance that? Mm -hmm. Yep, we can definitely do some investigative work on, yeah. on comparative pricing. Um, let's see what else. So special events, like Andy mentioned, we did the 5K and the Trunk or Treat, super great success. Um, for the month of November, we're doing a turkey hunt. So um, every Monday morning for the month of November, there is um, a large flyer on a stake that's placed in a, a town park or a town facility, an outdoor facility. Um, and whoever finds that sign and returns it to the recreation department gets a free turkey from Crosby's for the holiday season. So um, we had our first hunt on Monday morning and somebody found it within about 15 minutes. We had it on the Emerson playground. Um, so fun little initiative. We post the winners on our Facebook and Instagram. Um, so just something that Marty Hutchinson is doing for us. Um, the holiday parade and tree lighting will be Sunday, December 4th. Um, same parade route, same timeline as in years past, about 3 to 5 p.m. Um, and we will have photos with Santa in uh, Monument Hall across from Town Hall. We won't be using a town building this year for um, the Santa meet and greets. So he will be across the, across the circle. Um, January, we're looking at doing a parents' night out event at BD. <clears throat> February, we'll be doing a Winter Wonderland event. Um, we're working with the planning department to um, acquire some grant funding for some additional festivities at that event. Um, March will be our Shamrock Ball. April is the Egg Hunt. Uh, and then right after that, we'll be working on all of our summer concert series and, and movies in the park. So we'll, we'll keep you updated on that, but we will be doing one event per month for the community. <clears throat> um, and lastly, very quickly, we, uh, for our sports programs, it's a great time of year and a busy time of year. <clears throat> we are full for our elementary ski and middle school ski programs. They both sold out in 20 minutes. It was amazing. Um, so we have uh, 60 kids signed up for the middle school ski program with 70 on the wait list. Um, and we have 70 in the elementary program with 60 on the wait list. So very popular. Um, we are working with the mountains to see what we can do to take some of those kids off the wait lists. Um, there still are some limitations with busing regulations with how many kids you can put on a bus. So we're just making sure that it's cost effective if we do expand those spots, but we're, we're going to try hard to do that because the community really wants this program. Um, youth basketball registration is underway for our clinics and then our uh, 2022 season. Um, we're about 45% full for the league, which is the actual games and uh, competitions that start in January. And we are about, um, sorry, I don't have the percentage written down. Uh, the clinics are about 70%, if I recall, full. Um, so great response for youth basketball. We haven't run this classic youth basketball program in two years. So it's nice to see that uh, people are coming back for it. <clears throat> um, and then our school year programs continue to be very successful before school, after school, early release and preschool. Um, we have about 250 kids enrolled in the programs across the board for the month of October. That's up about 30 kids um, this time last year. So that's great. Um, and I believe I mentioned before, but um, we applied for childcare stabilization grant funds 
through the federal government. Um, and we were awarded $161,000 to support our childcare programs. Um, those funds can be used for payroll, for benefits, for COVID related expenses, um, facility adjustments, things like that. <clears throat> and so what we've decided to do, um, we spend about $350,000 a year on payroll for after school staff. So regardless, we uh, can put this 161 towards that number. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we are really showing appreciation for our 45-ish staff, making sure, um, again, it's a thankless job. It's a hard job working with this many kids every day after school. Um, it's, it takes a toll on you physically and mentally. Um, and so one of the benefits that we're offering is a free BD membership for all of our school year employees. <clears throat> that equates to about $23,000 of membership that we will be paying BD for. Um, so really nice opportunity for the staff. They're all really excited about it. Um, we're gonna be doing some school competitions for you know what school of staff get to the BD Center the most. And by doing so, they'll get a prize or a sweatshirt or, or something like that. So we're excited about it. Um, might be something that we'll try and implement moving forward, even without grant funds, not only to support the staff, but also um, to support BD with uh, this sort of opportunity. So we're really excited about it. Um, our first round of funding, there, it's going to be monthly checks that'll come in. We just got our first round today. So we're, we're very, very excited about that. <clears throat> and that is all I have for updates from the hot side. Any questions on any of that? Great. Thank you for that update, Anna. You guys are doing a great job. I'm looking forward to the tree lighting this year. Yes. Um, so next is the reports from the liaisons. Uh, Matt jumped off. He had another meeting. Um, but FinCom, Amrith, anything you'd like to share with the group? Yeah, let me just wait for this camera to turn on. There you are. Um, Nothing particular to share for uh, the Rec Commission. Uh, we're right now working through the guidelines process, um, trying to figure out with the town um, what the expenses are gonna be for all departments. I assume that the Rec Commission expenses were rolled up into the town's uh, request, which came to us from the town manager. Um, we had requests from the school and we're gonna have another meeting Thursday, I believe, which will be more in the same series. So this is the time of the year where we meet every every week. And um, I have nothing specific for the Rec Commission, but I'm going to turn the question around and ask if there's anything you'd like me to relate to the FinCom. Nothing from me. We're feeling pretty comfortable with the, the months ahead right now. Thanks. It's not Thanks. easy work being on the FinCom for sure. <laughs> so at this time, at this time it's a little bit more hectic, but it's it's understandable why it is up running up to town meeting. So yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely. If there are questions, you know where to find me. So thanks much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, and CPC, Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're in the middle of uh, all the application presentations. Thank you, Anna. What, what strikes me, you want to take a look at those ap applications. I mean, I, I'm new to the to the C CPC, but um, there is a lot of um, in defining recreation in a broader sense. We've had this conversation in terms of strategic plan. There's a lot of open space, a lot of open space recreation and housing collaboration on, on some very big projects and very exciting projects. You know, acquisition of land next to the river, acquisition of land next to the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail extension of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Um, these aren't recreation department assets per se, but but there is, um, there's a lot of open space that we ought to think about. Maybe there are recreation programs that we can use that space for, like, um, what is it called? Our kids, uh, the kid version of orienteering, um, uh, going through was to find- um, Geocaching. Yes, geocache. Um, that'd be a great program. We have so much open space and we're requiring much more open space. 
Um, the, the other thing that strikes me is, is the river. Um, I talked to Marsha about it. These trails along the river, you know, bluffs along the river, you look down and we have a recreational asset called the river. And of course we use it, but the department doesn't use it. Right. So, you know, we have open space, we have rivers. Can we build some programs around those? Just so many exciting things happening in town with open space um, acquisition. Um, and um, yeah, it's just interesting set, set of, uh, of uh, proposed applications. Then for next year, I think maybe uh, the commission order look with uh, with Anna and Adam and thinking ahead of time, maybe there are other um, uh, out of the box applications that that um, qualify because recreation is one of the big costs of, of funding opportunities with the CPC. Mm -hmm. One thing I've been thinking would be beneficial um, just for the organization is kind of putting together an annual calendar of topics and months that we want to talk about those topics. You know, looking now at the annual approval of the facility rentals, talking about CPC application ideas, things like that. So I've kind of been playing with that concept because um, it always sneaks up on me every year, CPC. So I, I think that's a great idea, Paul, you know, coming together earlier and thinking about opportunities. Yeah, I, you know, I think we could have a, a great program around geocaching alone um, mm -hmm. in town. There's just so much space, so much fun to do that. You know, could we, is it a revenue generating activity? Who knows? But um, it's something we're not looking at right now. Love that idea. Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, any public input? I don't think there's anybody from the public on. Next meeting. So <clears throat> if folks are up for it, I'd love to try and grab one more meeting at the end of November uh, before I potentially am out. So that would be the last Tuesday of the month is November 30th. If that works for folks. So the only, you know, I have these um, like weekly CPC meetings between now and the end of the year. If we could do something other than Tuesday, I, I don't, you know, that then I'm free to do anything. But but every Tuesday from next week through the just about the end of the year, okay, we have stuff going on in CPC. Does a Monday work, or does that conflict with um, Select Board? They are mainly Thursdays. Are I think they are Mondays. I'm pretty. I'm 99 sure that they meet on Mondays. And Amrith, what about FinCom? I know you said this is the busy time of year for you guys. Yeah, we typically meet on Thursdays at this point in time. Okay, so Thursdays and Tuesdays are out. Maybe checking in with Matt to see which day um, the select board is meeting and then sort of work around that. Mm -hmm. And I know Matt typically, his meetings start at seven o'clock, just like ours. Um, the, and Tuesdays at seven is just kind of in a standing time frame, but that's always open for discussion. So I don't know if 6.30 works for people. Um, I don't think we want to start any later, but um, you know, if we needed to adjust our time slightly for Matt to be able to attend a Monday, you know, 6.45, something like that, that's up to you guys. <clears throat> I'm happy to be flexible and, and going earlier in general. That is kind of tricky with um, my home cohort, if I'll call them that. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, that's something to figure out. And even if Matt comes on at 730 to discuss his pieces, um, you know, for a brief blurb or if he wants to send an email for this. I mean, a lot of this, Anna, is just wanting to get as much updates and approvals out the door before your maternity leave. Yep, and I'm uh, Adam will facilitate the next meeting and I'd like to be there to support him through that. Um, so if Monday the 29th at 7 p.m. works for all of you, I'll relay that to Matt and um, if he can join us, great. If not, that's okay too. Sorry, this great. is Monday the 29th of November? Yes. Okay. It's the weekend after Thanksgiving. It's the day, it, like the first weekday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Fine with Pete. Yeah, I appreciate the flexibility. It's just, um, I think I'm going to be working too hard. <laughs> that's, it's no small task. 
doing the CPC work. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of you doing the site visits, all the project reviews. And then when you start figuring out how you want to allocate the money, then the fun really begins. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's fun. Whoever follows me in a couple of years, it's giving out money is pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's great. always so many great projects and never enough money yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Albert, his, his, he's got his hits yeah. exactly okay so we will go with 7 p.m november 29th uh we'll see if matt's available but we'll hold that date and move forward with it okay um, okay that's Good. it and so any other additions, anything else anyone wants to add? Otherwise, we can make a motion to close the meeting. I so move. Okay, I second. Roll call. Casey Atkins, yes. Paul Bohm. Yes. Pete, Pete says Funkhauser, yes. Yes. And Jim Howard. Yes. Jen Lutz. Yes. All right. Thank you all and see you in a few weeks. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Good night, nice everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.